Welcome to the show. Uh, today we're going to be continuing the tradition we started last Friday. We're going to have our Tools Day Tuesday on a Friday. I know it doesn't make sense, uh, but that's what we're doing because that's how far behind I am. Uh, also, for those of you who are regular uh, subscribers, regular viewers, you will know that usually about once a month we do a subscriber builds video. I know it has been uh, probably two months since we did the last one. Um, I, I'm aware of it. I am working on it. I actually am working on that video. Uh, if you have sent your work to subscriber builds to that email, rest assured it will eventually be featured. I am not sure when it's going to be done. I am shooting for next week. I'm kind of hoping early next week. I'm trying to get back into the rhythm here of doing two to three videos per week, including builds. I know it's been a while. Uh, before we go any further, I do have to mention that I had some technical difficulties with the audio. So you will notice probably that the video here does not sync up very well with the audio. Uh, I actually had to re-record and kind of I'm doing this as a voiceover rather than sort of doing it all in one take, which is what I was planning to do. Uh, so uh, my apologies there, but there was some type of trouble with the audio when I was recording. So for those of you that watch the channel regularly, you know that uh, I generally do things that have to do with knife making or blacksmithing or DIY. And usually as I'm reviewing tools, I'm going to be reviewing tools that pertain to uh, those kinds of projects. Today is going to be a very different kind of tool. Uh, some of you might not even think of it as a tool. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. Uh, a few months ago I did a video demonstrating how to make a holster, specifically a pocket holster, using a Kydex press. That holster was for this little NAA revolver. NAA stands for North American Arms. And today I'm doing a review of this tool. Again, some people not, might not think of a gun as a tool, uh, but that is in fact what it is. Guns are created for a purpose, and in fact, uh, different guns are created for different purposes. This particular gun is designed essentially as a functioning miniature of uh, what you might consider an Old West style gun. It is a single action revolver, meaning that you have to manually cock the hammer each time you want to shoot. So it is very similar in overall form and function to those older style single action revolvers. Of course, it is much, much smaller, and that adds to sort of the novelty value and the collectability of a gun like this. This revolver is a 22. It also comes with a cylinder for 22 Magnum. I'll say that both of those calibers are, I don't want to call them weak. Of course, any firearm can be dangerous and potentially lethal, but those are definitely at the low end of the spectrum in terms of velocity, muzzle energy, and also in terms of recoil, which makes this a really fun gun to shoot. Now, some people might take issue with that because they'd say, hey, you bring this thing out to the range, it's so tiny, it barely fits in your hand. Uh, you know, you're trying to manipulate this little hammer and this little trigger and trying to... And I'll admit, I was a doubter when I first saw these. I kind of thought, um, you know, it's a cool little gimmick. It looks really neat. It might be something you'd buy and collect, uh, but it's not going to be very much fun to shoot. Well, it turns out that a lot of that comes down to the grips you have on the gun. Of course, some of it will have to do with the size of your hand. Some of it obviously is personal taste. But what I've found with the NAA revolvers is that if you find a grip that you like, they can actually be a lot of fun to shoot. And again, that comes down to that it's a very light recoil. I'll roll in some footage of me shooting, and you can see that there's virtually no recoil at all. This is with some fairly light uh, 22 shells. Uh, if I put in the 22 Magnum cylinder and use 22 Magnum, uh, you know, the barrel would flip up after every shot, uh, but it really doesn't have any recoil to speak of. Certainly nothing that would be unpleasant to shoot. Now, just to make sure that I got all the specifications right since I'm reviewing this, I went up to the North American Arms website and brought up the page for this particular model. Uh, this is the Wasp revolver. And you'll notice looking at the image here that it has a different set of grips on it. When I originally bought the revolver, it did have these uh, small rubber grips, but my brother, who also happens to be a mini revolver enthusiast, was working on a pair of grips for a revolver that he owned, and uh, he decided to give them to me instead when he found out that I had bought this revolver. I am deeply grateful for that, because it really does make a huge difference if you have a set of grips that is comfortable and that fits your hand well. As you can see, this is a very, very lightweight gun, uh, something you can easily carry on you and barely even notice that it's there. Whether you're using the 22 or the 22 Magnum, the cylinder holds five rounds. And the reloading process actually takes some time. Uh, they do have some that are easier to reload. They have a model called the Sidewinder. Uh, that one has a, 
a cylinder that just pops out with a cylinder release, uh, very much like a modern double action revolver, although they are single action, uh, but the cylinder does swing out like the modern style of revolver. Now you might expect looking at a barrel that's that short, I mean this is less than two inches, you might expect that this would be a very inaccurate gun, but actually the accuracy is quite good if you're very careful about how you shoot it. As an example, I uh, brought this plate with me today. I was going to use a paper plate, uh, but we were out of paper plates, so I wound up using styrofoam. Anyway, I just put a big black dot in the center, stood back about 10 feet, and you can see I fired all five shots into about a one-inch group. It might be a tad more than that. And I really want to stress that that does not represent the limitations of the gun. That's the limitations of the shooter. Uh, I was just standing and shooting offhand. I wasn't at a bench rest or anything like that. And for those of you who are regular shooters, you might even laugh at the thought of using a little revolver like this uh, and shooting from a bench rest. But if you actually take the time to carefully line up your shots, you can get groups like this easily out to 20 feet or more. Of course, this does have a very, uh, a very short sight radius, and it's not the best sights. And that does make the gun more difficult to shoot. But if you take a little time to familiarize yourself with it, you'd actually be surprised how accurate the gun can be. In terms of the fit and finish of the gun, I would say this is actually a very well-made little gun, especially for the price. Uh, I think I paid in the neighborhood of $260 or $270 for this. Of course, some of that depends on which model you buy. There are a few different models. Now, of course, guns do serve purposes besides just recreational shooting. And when you have a gun that's this size, you can't really talk about it without discussing at least one aspect of it. Yes, this is a very concealable model. Very small, very lightweight, can go with you anywhere. If you happen to live in a state in the United States like I do that does not restrict the carrying of firearms, or if you happen to have a permit, this is not necessarily a bad choice. Some of you may scoff at that statement, and, uh, and I don't fault you for that. But statistically speaking, most people who do get a permit to carry wind up not carrying. And when I say most, I mean like 95%. And the reason for that is because it's very difficult to find a firearm that you can carry without it becoming something that's inconvenient. Maybe it's heavy, maybe it doesn't uh, fit comfortably. And this, again, is an option that you could put just about anywhere on your body and almost forget that it's there. Just for size comparison and to show you another option, uh, here's a 38 Special. This is a Smith & Wesson. Very nice little gun. Also a common choice for people to carry. And of course, 38 Special is a larger and more powerful caliber. But as you can see, that comes at a price. Although it is still a very compact revolver, it is still much larger than the North American Arms Mini Revolver. So just to review, uh, from the standpoint of this being a tool, uh, this tool is not designed for target shooting. It isn't really designed to be a uh, defensive tool, although it certainly could be used in that capacity. It's really designed mostly just for fun, maybe for shooting a little bit at the range, for plinking, you know, shooting cams. It certainly has a, has a collectible quality to it, and it is just all around a fun little gun. With that said, it's always important to remember that any firearm can be dangerous, so even a little revolver like this should be treated with all the respect and all of the, the safety precautions that you would apply to any kind of a firearm, including shotguns and rifles and, uh, and much larger handguns. Well, that's about all I have time for. I really appreciate you watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Mostly I focus on blacksmithing, knife making, and, uh, and DIY projects, but once in a while I go into something a little bit different. Well, thanks again. Whoever you are, whatever you're doing, have a wonderful time, and we'll see you in the next video.